Hi, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about AC or DC. One of the common questions that we get today is, which setup should I use? Should I use a, a DC setup or should I go with the AC setup? And well, over the years, the answer to that question has changed. Uh, it used to be that we didn't have a lot of choices when it came to AC conversion uh, components. Uh, some of the early ones that uh, converters were using, uh, the low voltage AC setups just didn't have much torque and, and left a lot to be desired in the performance realm. And so while they spent more they kind of got less. And so there was a time when the series wound DC motor was king. You had a lot more selections. There are several companies that produce them. And uh, the racers all use them, so they were getting publicity there. And so uh, at one time, we would have pointed you in the direction of a series wound DC motor. Today, uh, things have changed. There are a lot more AC selection out there. And so that kind of has opened up uh, this issue of AC or DC more than ever before. And so just a little uh, add on to that. It's like with uh, batteries. There was a time when we converted more cars with lead acid than we did lithium. Today we don't do any lead acid conversions at all. Well, at one time we did more DC conversions than AC. Today we're doing more AC conversions than DC. So let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, idiosyncrasies of the two. And we'll start off looking at this little chart right here. And let me uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit to make it a little clearer on camera. Okay. A few of the attributes of an AC induction motor, which is what we use in the conversion world. Most notably, they offer regenerative braking. A feature which is nice uh, if you're in a uh, situation where you have a lot of stop and go traffic or you have uh, grades and so forth, uh, the regenerative braking is nice uh, because it gives you that one pedal uh, drivability. And the other scenario where uh, regenerative braking is nice is when you have a heavier vehicle. It's nice to have uh, the regenerative braking to help slow down that heavier vehicle so you're not relying totally on the brakes. Um, and most people think the big benefit of regenerative braking is range. Not necessarily so. Uh, we have seen many studies where the outcome, because we want to keep the video short, not going to go into great deal of uh, detail, bottom line is you get more uh, range from coasting than you do from regenerative braking. And so, it's a big attribute of the AC induction motor. The other is, uh, they tend to be lighter and they tend to run cooler. The Series 1 DC motor, on the other hand, they're known for their good torque and uh, they cost a little bit less and you can use a, a wide selection of controllers where typically we have the AC induction motor is mated with uh, the inverter and they kind of go together as a package. Um, and the DC motor requires maintenance. Uh, you need to inspect the brushes, check them for wear, 
and we also recommend that you blow out uh, the motor uh, on occasion when you're inspecting your brushes because um, you'll get uh, brush dust build up in the motor. The motor is drawing air in through the commutator end and sucking it through the motor and, and exhausting it out uh, the drive end and so that's sucking all that brush dust into the motor and it will build up and can cause you uh, problems uh, down the road. So we recommend blowing it out every once in a while with uh, compressed air. Be sure to wear the appropriate mask and eye protection when you do that. So that's kind of the, the two different types in a nutshell. Now let's look at a couple of real world examples of both an AC induction motor setup and the Series 1 DC motor setup. Alright, so we're going to talk about AC setup and the DC setup. Both of these uh, were spec'd at 72 volts. So this is nice, this is uh, factory information that was provided and it's both at, at 72 volts. So we're talking apples and apples. There's been times where you know one company does their testing at one voltage and another test, and they only give you information at that one particular voltage. Now we've got uh, um, charts that go off and so forth that allow us to to do a little better side-to-side uh, -side comparison. So what we're going to use uh, for comparison on our AC side, we're going to use the High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems AC50 and on the DC side we're going to use the very popular well-known net gain Warp 9. Now, first off we'll talk about the weight. The AC50 is 122 pounds, the Warp 9 is 143 pounds. Got a little more windings and so forth on this Warp 9, a little more mass to it. Uh, and that was one of the things we talked about and the differences is the lighter weight. Both these setups are what we recommend for vehicles up to 3,000 pounds. Uh, you go over 3,000 pounds, we recommend you use uh, bigger motors. So, like I said, we try to keep this apples and apples here. 122 and 143 pounds respectively. We have uh, 8 inch diameter and 13.8 inches in length on the AC50. The Warp 9 is a 9 and a quarter inch motor and it's 13.6 inches long. And that spec on the length is not shaft to shaft, you know, uh, it's the motor casing uh, dimension that we're giving you there. Uh, efficiency wise, uh, they're basically the same. Uh, this one's 89%, 89.3 on the Warp 9. Both at 72 volts are, are capable of putting out 100 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, to get the 100 foot-pounds of torque, uh, the uh, uh, AC50 is pulling 589 amps. The Warp 9 is pulling 500 amps. Maximum RPM, maximum RPMs on the AC50 is 6,500 and 5,500 on the Warp 9. The AC50 is able to produce at 72 volts, 53 horsepower at 3,200 RPMs. At 72 volts, the uh, Warp 9 is capable of 48 horsepower at a lower RPM, 2198. Now, this is just at 72 volts. Uh, these both have their limits. You can actually pump more voltage through a Warp 9 than you can the AC50. About 170 volts is max on the AC50. You can get up to 190 through a Warp 9, 192 volts through the Warp 9. Uh, and then the cost, 
And so the AC50 mated with the Curtis 1238-7601 controller. This is a 650 amp controller and it's uh, 4650 on the price. The Curtis, uh, I mean the Warp 9 with the Curtis 1231C-8601 controller, which is a 500 amp controller, um, 3490. So these are kind of the low end on both of them. Um, and trying to give you as, as equal a comparison as, as, as uh, possible. And so you can see um, where you are. Now, if you mated the Warp 9 with the Avnetics Soliton Junior, which is a 600 amp controller, um, it would add um, about $500 to this. So you'd be about 4,000. So, uh, no matter how we run it, the AC setup is going to be just a little bit more expensive. Not, not, not hugely, but uh, that kind of gives you that real world picture right here. What are we looking at on a AC conversion for a vehicle under 3,000 pounds versus the DC setup for that same vehicle? Here's the specs that's 72 volts. Unfortunately, uh, I can get the specs for the AC50 at say 144 volts, which is a, a, a common conversion voltage, uh, one that I would like to do the comparison at. I have those specs for the AC50. I don't have them available for the net gain. That's why we give them to you at the 72. That's this is what uh, Netgame Motors makes available. Their specs are all at 72 volts. So you'll find though as the voltage changes, these things aren't quite as, uh, as comparable. You'll, you'll see some, some, some changes there. So anyway, uh, that's it in a nutshell. So back to the question, AC or DC? Well, uh, it, it comes down to uh, which one best suits your application. What is it that, uh, that you're converting and what is it that you want uh, you know, to get out of that conversion? What, how, how do you want it to perform? And so the way to, to answer that then is to Do your homework, as you hear me say all the time. Very important. Do your homework. And part of that is going online and getting the manufacturer's specs. And then you can look at what is that motor and controller combination capable of doing. What are the uh, uh, RPMs that my vehicle is, is going to be running? Um, you know, what, 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 which, which is the best match for my vehicle. So if you have a, a, a vehicle, say like a Miata uh, versus a, uh, a pickup. So you've got your S10 pickup conversion and you've got a Miata conversion. Those two are going to have different uh, requirements and you're going to want their gearing is different and so forth and you're going to want to make choices based on you know your platform that you're using so uh, use the spec sheets to help determine what's the best fit for your vehicle and the good news is that there's more choices than ever before more selection uh, maybe the choices isn't good news <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to do your homework. Uh, it was easy when it was A or B. Now you've got the whole alphabet to look at. So uh, do your homework, and uh, and if you need you know further assistance, uh, you can email us. 
info at ev4unow.com. And as always, we're happy to help out. So, whichever you choose, I'm sure you'll be happy because uh, this is like most things in life. The really fun part's the journey, doing the homework, uh, designing and building your conversion. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and what you get out when you, when it's all said and done, that's a lot of fun too. Uh, but you know, take your time, enjoy the journey, and tune in next time when we'll discuss something else that pertains to that journey. See you then. Hello, I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. You want to learn more? You want to learn about all the components in greater detail? You want to actually install the components and wire conversion? Test it and drive it? Well, you can. By attending one of ev for us three-day hands-on conversion workshops. You will get a chance to learn, discuss, ask questions about all the components used in the conversion. Wiring techniques, hardware used, safety, how it all goes together, and much more. But we don't just talk about it. We go into the shop and install the components in a vehicle, wire it up, and test it. After testing in the shop, we test it on our test track and in the industrial park where we're located. One of the vehicles we'll be using in 2014 is our sand rail. It's a blast. So come join us for three days of education and fun. Meet people from all over in a beautiful setting while learning how to convert a vehicle from gas to electric. ev for You provides lunch each day at great local restaurants. After hours, you can visit many of the local attractions, like Shasta Lake, the largest lake in California, Shasta Dam, the second largest concrete dam in the United States, Shasta Caverns. You can take a dinner cruise on Shasta Lake. Take a walk on the Sundial Bridge. Visit Mount Shasta. There's night skiing available during the winter. Visit Bernie Falls National Recreation Area. Or go kayaking at Whiskey Town Lake. You can check out the source of the Sacramento River. The Sacramento River is the largest river in the state of California. And you can see where it bubbles out, out of the ground. We've got world-class fishing, hiking, and biking, all within minutes of EV for Use shop. So we we'll hope you'll join us. So visit www.ev4unow.com and register today. The class sizes are limited, so don't delay.